Both. Not just confess that Jesus is Lord, confess that I now believe in Him, forsakes those sins. Seek the Lord while He may be found and call upon Him while He is near. Let the wicked forsake His ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and He will have mercy on him and to our God for He will abundantly pardon. Yes, the mercy and the love and the pardon is there, but only on people that seek Him. And cleanse their hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded, and lament, mourn, and weep, and let your laughter be turned to mourning, and your joy to gloom, and humble yourself in the sight of God, and He will lift you up. That's the way you should be drawn near to God. That's James 4, verses 8 through 10. The other was Isaiah 55, 6 and 7. Pardon cannot be granted to somebody in the very act of these heinous sins, folks. That's a myth, a lie from the pits of hell. And it's going to put your soul in hell if you believe it. Lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word that's able to save your soul. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own self, it says next, James 1, 21 and 22. See, you cleanse yourself of all filthiness and overflow of wickedness. You purge the leaven from your heart, your deceit and the double-mindedness and the guile in the act of repentance. No one knows that in the church. That's why you got to get out of that mess before you ever find relief from all this. Put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication and uncleanness, passions and evil desires, and covetousness which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience I alluded to before. That's Colossians 3, verses 5 and 6. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of these. It's so hard to speak of these things which are done in secret. God's going to judge the secrets of men's hearts. He's going to bring everything out to the light and judge you according to all those things that you harbored in your heart. You said because of filthy rags and you have a sinful nature. You have no sinful nature. You have excuses to sin. No, it's not that you can't stop sinning. It's you won't stop. You won't put forth the effort. See, those of you that are still going to these Christian counselors, have you ever heard any of these passages used as sound advice for the well-being of your soul? No. No, not likely. Because they just don't believe that these are any part of salvation. They don't have anything to do with salvation, even though every one of them does. Do they ever expose the unfruitful works of darkness in their midst? Bring the molesters to justice? Reprove the oppressors? Rebuke the evildoers in the presence of all? that others may fear, as the Bible says. No, they never do those things. It's always hush, hush, under the rug. Silence, silence, shh, don't say nothing. And if the victim comes out and cries out for deliverance from these things, well, they're, they're the worst person in the church. Shoot the messenger, as they always say. No, they don't do any of them things. They don't expose the unfruitful works of darkness among them, in the choirs, and the all the activities and uh, marches against uh, gay rights and abortion, and they think they're doing God's work, supporting the military and school and Christian schooling and God and country and the nation of Israel. No, they never do it. They just coddle these people. And they make the victims feel like trash. But the real trash are those people that are standing in the pulpits across this land and allowing this to continue unabated right under their nose. Gutless wonders. I called him before, who would rather let the victims suffer than call out the wicked and expose them for what they are. Cowards, every one of them. Cowards. It says in Revelation 21.8 that the cowards, in the, uh, they will not inherit the kingdom, along with all the fornicators and the liars, those who love and practice a lie. It also says the cowards are outside in the weeping of gnashing, gashing and weeping just like you pastors and you church leaders. Nobody in their sins, in the very act of sin, should be given any assurance whatsoever that they're on safe ground with God or that He's standing by and waiting for the right opportunity to affect repentance in them, like some kind of magic. People who commit these kind of sins are not Christians. Quit calling them Christians. You can say profess Christians. You can say the, the phonies, the posers, they're not Christians. 
It's a moot point whether to discuss here whether they have been saved to begin with and they've fallen from. It's a moot point. That's not worth discussing. Because if they've never stopped sinning to begin with, then they've never received the mercy of God and the Holy Spirit's not among them. Because it's repentance before remission. It's like I've talked about hundreds of times. You're not going to be granted the Holy Spirit or granted the mercy of God until you come clean with God. You want to call it works? Then you call it works all you want. But that's what the Scripture says. Repentance proven by deeds. That's what the Scriptures call it. And I'll stand with the Scriptures. See, turning from your sin is your choice. It's not waiting for God to magically turn you or change your desires. Your desires will change when you make a determined effort to come clean with Him, where you seek Him with all diligence and determination and strive and count the cost and take up your cross. God's already convicting the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment through His Spirit. He's already stand, reaching forth with His hand to every, all mankind. He's already not willing that any should perish but all come to repentance. He said, I have no pleasure in the death of one who dies in his sins. So turn and live. Turn, not confess, not receive. No magic. Turn and live. The preparation of the heart belongs to man. That's all the counseling that's required for you to start out in the face of God to the next step to wash yourself and make yourself clean. Put away the evil of your doings before my eyes and cease to do evil and learn to do good. Seek justice. Rebuke the, oppre the oppressor. Defend the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Plead for these victims. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If you are willing and obedient. That's the key here. You will eat of the good of the land, but if you refuse and rebel, you continue in these acts, you continue in this rebellion under these phony counselors and pastors, then you'll be destroyed, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Speaking to scarlet sinners that have the ability to wash, purify, come clean, put away that evil, if you stop listening to all these lies and get on your face before a holy God. Because you're going to face him one day anyway. So my final word to you so-called Christian counselors and you pastors out there that are waiting in this filth in your churches and trying to offer him some useless advice and words that do not profit. Awake to righteousness and do not sin, for some of you do not have the knowledge of God. And I speak this to your shame, to your utter, utter shame. You have no knowledge of God. To you hapless victims out there, in this mess, trapped. I say to you, stand fast in the Lord and be assured of His abiding love. And also be assured that He will vindicate your cause if you stand in Him. Know that He's the one that searches the heart and tests the mind and gives to every man according to his ways and to the fruit of his doings. And no one escapes the ultimate consequences of their actions in this life. They may seem to get by with it for a while as judgment is delayed. But when the final accounts come due, the wages of their sin are going to be paid, not by what they think happened on the cross, but by the weeping and gnashing of teeth when they're cast into outer darkness. The Lord knows those who are His, and He will not forsake His faithful ones. Always remember that in the midst of your sorrow, in your despair, in everyone abandoning you. Remember Psalm 37, Turn from evil and do good. Then you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. For the Lord loves the just and will not forsake his faithfulness ones. Wrongdoers will be completely destroyed, and the offspring of the wicked will perish. But the righteous will inherit the land and dwell in it forever. Remember, he will not forsake his faithful ones. So remain faithful to the end. No matter what happens, no matter what you face, no matter how hard it is, I know it's not easy to come through these things. And I pine for you. But I offer you that advice in the best of my ability to convey this message to you and to the world of this emergency of being saved in the very act of these horrible sins in the churches. There's hope in Jesus Christ only if you come to Him in sorrow and repentance, folks.
do it today.